Welcome back everybody to the Wandering Samurai Study in which we review and analyze every single act told in Ruana Kenshin and today's act is Act 56, Meiji 11th, May 14th, Morning. In the last video I discussed Saito's Secret Life of Characters page and the big takeaway being that Kenshin, the Kenshin Gumi and Saito are never really uh, meant to come together as I guess friends. There's always supposed to be like the separation between Saito and the Kenshin Gumi that they're never really supposed to jive with one another or they're always kind of meant to be at odds with one another. And in this chapter we kind of get visual confirmation of such and I loved it. I thought it was really funny and that every single character in this panel in particular has a nasty face when thinking about Saito and I love the way that um, Saito responds to this with uh, his sneezes and him feeling that the Shinsengumi should be despised in the Meiji that he must be doing something right <laughs> it's um so good but um I'm not really gonna talk about Saito he's not really a big part of this chapter so uh, let's get into the chapter summary review and we'll talk about everything else. It's May 14th, the day that Okubo promised to return to hear Kenshin's answer as to go to Kyoto or not and everyone is concerned with Kenshin's answer, despite him simply carrying on by doing laundry. Sano demands an answer out of him and without giving his answer away, Kenshin decides that he's going to go see Okubo in person. Elsewhere on a moving carriage, Okubo ponders on the heavy day that he'll have and what answer Kenshin will give him when one of Shishio's men ambushes the moving carriage and murders him. Okubo's dead body is discovered by a group of samurai that plan to assassinate him and take credit for the death of Okubo. Kenshin finds the slain Okubo and his killer warning Kenshin about challenging Shishio. So the first thing that I want to talk about in this chapter is this balance of tone throughout the chapter <laughs> as the beginning of the chapter kind of feels very dark and very somber uh, as Kaoru narrates us and kind of brings us back into the situation at hand and how Kenshin needs to give this answer and everybody's kind of wondering what that answer is but then the tone of the chapter shifts into a comedic one when everybody is indeed wondering what Kenshin is going to say and kind of like trying to keep him around and then the chapter ends with this murder, but by the time that the murder occurs, the jokes are over and we're kind of shifted back into a much more serious tone. And I really like that in this chapter because um, I feel that the comedy kind of has a meaning here. While the characters themselves are discussing Kenshin's answer and wondering if Kenshin is actually going to go, like the whole thing is kind of played up for jokes, it's kind of played up for laughs, and the cast is very openly, like very upfront, telling Kenshin that they don't want him to go see Okubo, and, or they don't want him to go to Kyoto. But the laughs and the jokes, it's kind of like setting this uh, vibe that this, these jokes, these, these collar and dog jokes where Yahiko is calling Kenshin a, a, a dog and it's what Kenshin is going to be leaving if he goes to Kyoto. We're kind of like shown that this is everything that Kenshin's walking away from if he decides to say yes. And so while the cast is very openly telling him uh, we don't want you to go they're also showing him hey this is camaraderie this is a uh, community these we are your family and this is what it's like when you're with us if you go to Kyoto you're gonna be walking away from this and I think that Kenshin also recognizes this uh, having been a wanderer for several years before settling down here with Kaoru at the Kamiya Dojo I think it makes sense for Kenshin to decide that he's going to uh, meet Okubo in uh, in person and that he's going to go to him rather than have Okubo come to him. In this way, Kenshin can have a, a much more focused conversation and it can be a little bit more private. It can be a one-on-one -on -one between the two and he doesn't have his family basically speaking for him telling him that they don't want Kenshin to go because just like in the last chapter we would probably be getting Sonosuke uh, talking trash about the government uh, Megumi offering to hang herself if it means uh, Kenshin doesn't have to go to Kyoto 
And also, Kenshin wouldn't have to see Kaoru's worried face as this dilemma is being dealt with. So I, I I see this as the reason why Kenshin decides to go, but <laughs> um, but also another reason why Kenshin decided to go to uh, see Okubo rather than wait for Okubo to arrive is so that Kenshin could encounter one of Shishio's men and what Shishio's men are capable of with an assassin. But we'll talk about that in just a moment with Okubo's death. <laughs> But the next thing that I want to talk about is Kaoru because uh, Kaoru seems to be worried. She's been worried for a few chapters now, but the rest of the group seems mostly annoyed because they don't believe that Kenshin would actually go and kill somebody if he's asked to do it. And everybody's kind of voicing their opinions uh, without maybe being asked. <laughs> Because Kaoru says something that I think is pretty legitimate. Uh, she says that what Kenshin won't do, Batosai will. As she's seen the Batosai on more than one occasion at this point, And she's uh, seen that when uh, Batosai emerges, he is willing to assassinate where Kenshin isn't. Or he is willing to kill when Kenshin isn't. And so asking Kenshin to go and assassinate somebody... All it means is that Hitokini Batosai needs to be there to actually execute the kill. So she's worried that he might actually uh, do it. And at this point, she's not certain if Kenshin isn't willing to use the Hitokini Batosai to do this job. So I really like how to uh, in this chapter, but I also really, really, really love what she says. What Kenshin won't do, Batosai will. And so now let's go ahead and finish off the chapter by talking about Okubo's death. I think that the fact that the Rurouni Kenshin story exists is proof enough that Watsuki is a history buff. And it's been kind of shown to us throughout the show or throughout the narrative um, by him describing certain events and describing certain techniques and describing like dynamics and such as the Shinsengumi with uh, the ancient Shishi and uh, involving uh, Sagara Sozo, uh, Seki Hotai, you know, all of that stuff and talking about Aizu and with Megumi. Um, I think that it's all evident here, but Okubo's death day, May 14th, is actually Okubo Toshimichi's real life death day. And even though the manga chapter doesn't explain this properly, Okubo was murdered or was planned to be murdered by the men that we got in this chapter. And that is what happened to the real life Okubo. The Secret Life of Characters page kind of explains a little bit more about Okubo and it's actually in this chapter as well so go ahead and take a look at that. But Okubo was not welcomed at home anymore after he suppressed a, a rebellion from his home province. And people from this home province uh, planned to assassinate him and that's exactly how he, the real life Okubo died. And so using the, the real life death day and how Okubo was murdered uh, in real life, weaving those points into the narrative and having Shishio's men come and actually murder him so that he could remain in the shadows and have the story reflect the real life Okubo's death was just such a good way of killing off this character and using it as a plot point for this narrative. I really, really like this and it just shows that he's taking time and uh, really paying attention to history and using this for his narrative. It, uh, it just really makes me appreciate this chapter in a way that I uh, really hadn't really considered before. But like I said, Shishio's men killing Okubo so that the, these men who already planned on killing Okubo can take the credit is a really good way for us to see how Shishio operates. How he's a ghost of the past, as I keep saying who works in the shadows just the way that he operated when he was in the Bakumatsu. Shishio is already showing us that he is excellent at moving in the shadows and, and moving in ways so that nobody needs to know that he exists. And that is super, super cool. 
man, this chapter. <laughs> I can't wait for the next one. But this has been Act 56 of Rerunning Kenshin. If you like this video and you want to see more, then consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a thumbs up and comment down below something that you liked about this chapter. I really liked all all of it. I really think that there, this was a really solid chapter and I'm so glad to be covering it here with everybody. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for now, I am off to go edit this video so you guys can see it. Bye, ciao. Hello. And at this point, she's not certain if Kenshin is just willing to uh, tap into the Bato side to use that, uh, to use that side of him to, to to do this job.